Hello everybody, um, my name is Karin Belfeder. It's one name, in case you're wondering. So that's about it. I'm a software developer at uh, Oracle Revelo. Um, we'll talk about it in a second. This is uh, the general agenda of this talk. I'm gonna introduce you to what does Oracle Revelo do in order to proceed from there to talk about our testing environment. Um, then we'll go on to our requirements, we'll overview what does it mean, um, what did it force us to do in order to make this work, and then we'll talk a bit about what I think about this setup, who is it good for, who is it not so recommended for, and so on. So let's start. <laughs> Oracle Re Revelo was founded by uh, Kumar and its founders in 2011, and in 2016 it was bought, acquired by Oracle. Um, basically what we do is a, we're a virtual cloud provider. It means that we're a cloud provider, but we run on top of other clouds. So it means Amazon's AWS or Google's GCE or, of course, uh, Oracle's OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So why is it good for you, one might ask. So basically it's good for one of my, our main features is lift and shift. It means that we would take big networks of other companies and just move them on-premise networks and just move them to the cloud as there is, as they are, um, without changing the machines, without changing the network configuration, just as it is. So this is a big feature. Besides that, they can choose what cloud they want to run on top of. So it could be Amazon's, or it could be Google, or, or it could be Oracle. <laughs> so this is basically the, the product. But in order to understand a bit more what is the testing environment we're going to talk about, let's just focus on the, on the part that we're going to test. Okay, so let's, let's assume we have one cloud instance. It could run on Amazon or Google or whatever, as we said before. So we would want to run any of your guests, any of your machines on top of it. So we have our customers instance. And this instance would need to have, of course, storage or network configuration, whatever any machine will have. So instead of calling it a customer's instance, let's just call it a guest from now, OK? So we, we might have one guest, we might have more than one guest, and sometimes our, we can run all the network on top of more than one instance, right? We could have 100 guests, and then we wouldn't really run it on one cloud instance. So we might have in this, guest, in this customer's app more than one cloud instance, so it could have four guests or and in this cloud instance it could have another two or another three or another four and it depends on the requirements so now we generally understand what are some of our differences between different customers but we have more differences right so let's just focus on something else so all the all those machines also have storage and this storage is hosted in the cloud as well and we could run our instance in one cloud and run and store his this guest storage in a different cloud. And sometimes it might be in the same cloud, but in different regions. Like I could run my guest in, in Virginia, but my storage could be in, in Sydney. So this is differences that I also have to handle. And another set of parameters that I might need to test is all, everything that's related to network configuration. So I could have all my guests in one network subnet, or I could have them divided between several networks, and it could ver differ between cloud instances in any way you could imagine any network. So also in the setup that you can see on the screen right now. So as you can see, we have a lot of different variations that we want to test, and we want to run them smoothly everywhere on every, every cloud in every configuration. So this is a big challenge that we have. So let's talk about what really are our network requirements, our sorry testing requirements. So 
Let's start with those. So we have main four requirements. The first one, as we talked about it just a second ago, we have a lot of scenarios and a lot of use cases. Every customer can come with whichever network or guests or whatever he defined and say, this is the network that I want to run smoothly on, on your infrastructure. So we, we need to make sure, sure that works. The second one is that each test needs a different cloud instance. What does it mean? It means that maybe I would want to run two guests on top of one cloud instance. And then I might need or want more than one CPU, right? That makes my life way easier. Sometimes I would want to run five guests or 10 guests, and then it changes all of my hardware requirements. And it also changes when I have different network settings. Sometimes I will have one network card or another network card. So it, it influences a lot what instance type I take. So this is another problem. The third problem is that I want each test to run on multiple cl clouds, right? Each test that I define, I want to make sure that it's running well on Amazon or on Google or on OCI. And the last one is that I want it to be automated e easily because if it's not automated, no one does it well, right? So, because it's testing, we all, we're all lazy people. So we need it to be automated well and allowed me, allow me to run it in groups or suits. Sometimes I just want to make sure that my feature works well on a lot of CPU variations. Sometimes I want to make sure that it's memory variations. Sometimes I just want to run a big set of tests every night just to make sure that everything's fine. So I have a lot of variations and I want it to be easy. So let's start solving those problems. So before we go into solving them, let's talk a bit about what is PyTest. So as some of you might know, or PyTest is one of the most popular testing modules and it's popular because it's magical. So let's let's think about, let's talk about why is it magical. So first of all, we have a very simple test discovery. It means that I have a very easy way of saying this is a test that I want to run. I want you to to make sure you notice this is another test. I created another test test. Pay attention to this one. Another reason is that it has an easy setup and teardown for each each test. What does it mean? It means that I when I create tests, I create a scenario, right? I say, I want this scenario to work well. But before and after every scenario, I have to build stuff to make things happen. In my case, I want to make sure that I have a new cloud instance. I want to make sure that it's the right one and so on. So this is my setup. My teardown would probably be just turning off that instance or in other things. It depends on the scenario. All of you can probably think of all your setups and teardowns. Another feature that it has that is probably the most important one is that it's really easy to create uh, me metrics of parameters. Um, it's very easy for me to define what is the parameters and differences for each test and it would just show it to me easily. It's very configurable. I'll show you in a second. And the last one that the test suits are just neat. I mean, you can find easy ways to define, to say, this is a big module of one types of tests. This is another module and so on. And you could also cross modules, say, this is a test suit. This is the test that I want to run on every feature. This is the test I want to run when I make a new version and so on. So it's, it's very easy for me. So let's look at one example. So let's say this is my test, okay? You can see that I defined several operating systems and this test is called test operating systems boot. It means that all I wanna do is upload my guest to the cloud and run it and make sure it booted well. So this is a pretty simple scenario. You can see it's about, I don't know, like eight lines of code. And all happen everything that happens here is that I, defi I defined um, a parameter, which is my operating systems, and I run on every single operating system, and I add it to my setup, I run it, and then I make sure it booted well. Pretty easy. 
So you can see I have all my operating systems over there, but in, in the real world, I have way more operating systems that I want to make sure are working. And this is how it looks like when I tell it, please find all the tests that are related to my operating systems. So you can see that I have a bit more than four operating systems, and uh, I can promise you that there's even more than that. So as we can probably agree by now, Py PyTest is an amazing module, and we all want to use it all the time. So <laughs> now that we have established that, let's talk a bit about what problems does this module solve for me. So if we go back to our requirements, we can see that it helps me with working with a lot of scenarios and use cases, right? I have a big ma matrix, and I can run on every single one of those uh, parameters one by one and run every test in every configuration that I want to. The second problem that it solves for me is that it's very automated. I can run PyTest and say, hi, PyTest, can you run all the operating system module for me? And it would just run by, by this module, by this group. I can also say, this is a test that, I, that belongs to this suit. This is the test that I want to run every night, every hour, every time that I build a new version, version and so on. OK. OK, so let's go to the next part. We still have two more problems to solve. So the next problem, before we go into it, let's go over how a test flow is going on. OK, so the first part is that I want to define a test scenario. In this, in this specific scenario, I did pretty much the same, the same thing. You can see I have a setup. I said one of my guests will be an Ubuntu guest. Um, here, this is the way I, I say to, the, to my test, please run. And then I say, verify my guest is alive, is alive and booted. Um, this is how we do it. Um, so this is my test scenario. The next part is that I want to fill in the miss missing data, right? Because all I said is that I have an Ubuntu, but I haven't defined lots of things. Like, I still don't know what is the network configuration of this setup. I still don't know how much RAM this guest probably need, and so on. So you can see that uh, one, of, one, of, uh, one part of my flow is that I fill in all the missing data. The next part is that I want to set up my test environment. So this is the part when I up, when I say to the cloud, How, hi, can you please give me one instance? This is all the parameters that my instance needs to, to have. And this is how many CPUs. And this is the type of CPUs, and so on. So this is the next phase. Uh, the one afterwards is obviously running the test on the instance. Um, and so. We, may, we mainly wait this part. No, just kidding. Uh, so we run our scenario that we defined before. And the last part is that we tear it down. Um, so whether it was successful or failed, we want to take down the cloud instance or whatever your setup has to be, like whatever you need to tear down. So this is the flow that we have. And the interesting part is how do I choose a cloud instance, because it's not that obvious, right? I have a very big amount of use cases. And every use case needs a very different cloud instance. So basically, what we said, OK, before, beforehand, the obvious uh, problem is that we have different hardware requirements, as we said. So the obvious solution is maybe to take one huge instance type and just run all tests on top of this one and just run it one by one. And this instance will have all the CPUs the cloud can give me and all the memory and storage space that it has. Like I would just own all of Amazon's storage space and all and take all the network cards that I owe that they have and so on. But this kind of sucks because you know, it's very expensive, and there's a limit to how many tests I can run at the same time. So we said, okay, we're a cloud provider. There's 
an of an, uh, another obvious solution right here, right? So option number two is that every test gets a fitting instance. Why is it good for? So first of all, it's way more scalable, right? I can run as many tests as I want at the same time. I can run 300, 3,000 tests at the same time. And until the cloud tells me I cannot take you anymore, please go away, I can keep running more tests. And that's a very far limit, right? I hope, I do hope so. Um, so that's one advantage of this way of running tests. The second advantage is that it's easier to debug failed tests. I can decide whether I want to tear down the test or not according to whether this test succeeded or failed. This is a huge advantage comparing to the previous one, right? Because now I can go to every time that the test failed and just look into it on in real time. I can say, I don't want this, this uh, instance to go away. I want it to see exactly what happened there. And this is very, a very important feature when you talk about operating systems or memory problems or whatever you have in this round, in, in this area. Um, you tell me about other areas. And the last advantage it has is that each test gets exactly the resources that it needs. And this is a big advantage because that's what happens in the real world. And I want to be as close to the real world scenarios as I can. Um, second of all, it kind of depends on your use case, but sometimes it's cheaper. Okay, so now we kind of solved uh, the feeding problem, right? So now we can, we know what instance types we need. And when looking back on, on the test flow, we, we kind of solved the part where we set up the test environment. Okay, great. So now we have one more problem is that the, each test has to run on multiple clouds, but the obvious problem is that each cloud has a different SDK and a different uh, set of regions and different instance types. And I have different credentials for it and so on. And it kind of messes my code. I, I want it to work somehow. And so we thought about it and we said, okay, why not one API to rule them all? So we said, okay, we'll take every feature that we need from the cloud, every command that we want to run and we'll just create another abstraction layer on top of it. So let's say we want to create, we want to, we want to ask the cloud to create another instance or to take down an instance or to attach a network card to an instance. We'll just create functions that say, okay, let's say if it's Amazon, this is what we do. If it's Google, this is what we do. If it's Oracle's OCI, this is what we'll do. And so we did. So we took one of those. This is Google's for one for, as an instance. So this is the part where, where I say, I want to get all the instance types that you have sorted by, by cheap to most expensive ones. And this is the way we do it for Google. And this is the way we do it for Amazon. And this is the way we do it for OCI. And now I don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. I just say, cloud, bring me instance types, and it does. So one API to rule them all is fabulous and fixed and made everything way easier for us. So by now we kind of solve the last problem, right? So we're totally good and we have all solutions to all our requirements. And at this point, let's take a step back and look at our pros and cons of this setup. So the obvious ones are partly the ones I was talking about before. So we do have a huge ma matrix of parameters. This is great. We have a super easy to way to create new tests. This is awesome. You've seen it. You have just few lines of code and you create new scenarios. And it's very easy to debug, which is great in my case. Maybe for other ones, <laughs> for other people, it's not that important. Um, surprise me, but it's a, an amazing feature. The cons are that it's a very big infrastructure. You have to create one API on top of 
all your cloud SDKs. You have to create all your setup and tear down processes in a way that suits PyTest. And so you need to, to define all your suits and all your modules and so on, which might be something you'll do anyway, but it kind of changes among testing infrastructures. So such a big infrastructure takes time to develop, to maintain, to, to add new feature according to your new, new features of your product. So it doesn't, doesn't suit everybody. It, it doesn't fit every company. But for us, it's good because we need that. We need it to be scalable. When you do things in the cloud, you have to make it work in every scenario. And the last part is that it could be pretty expensive when you run so many instances, but it kind of depends on your use case. So I don't know if it's a con, just take a look. If you want to take all those ideas to your companies, I suggest that you take, take a look into how much it costs you to run it on this structure or a different structure. Okay, so this is basically what I wanted to, talk, to tell you about. I think it's a pretty interesting way of running tests, of handling so many scenarios, of work and working in the cloud in an interesting way and leveraging how easy it is to now work in the cloud. So I hope you take some of it to your companies and adopt some of your some of these ideas because I think they're great, very easy and fun, especially in Python. Um, and this is about it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Yeah, basically, the question was if every test is a guest on a cloud instance. And the answer is that it depends on the scenario that I defined. Some tests would have one guest on a cloud instance. Some would have 10. It depends on what's the scenario I want to test. And do I have to define my own teardown? Or is there like a default? Like, what's the default teardown if I don't define anything by myself? So if you don't define anything, there's no teardown. Like, if you don't need a teardown, you're all good. So the parameters will stay on the machine. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> well, so my setup is to um, set to define a set of parameters and say, this is my scenario, this is my guests, this is my network configuration, and so on. And then using all those definitions, I can say, hi cloud, I need this and that, and so on. And this is why I need a teardown because I don't want to keep paying for all those guests, but I could just let my test stop at this point if I, and then I will run tons of instances forever. Yes. Uh, is there is it more efficient than having like a mock-up uh, instance? Is there a... When you say a mock-up instance, you mean? Uh, virtual, uh, virtual machine running the tests. So this is pretty equivalent to running all the tests on just one big instance. And as I said before, it's just a matter of your product. I need to run a lot of tests and some of them are, need very small instance types and some of them need huge instance types. So for me, it's more efficient to just run different ones. But I could run all of them on the same instance and it probably would be just fine. So why choose? So why choose this uh, architecture without like, uh, raising uh, real uh, like EC3 machine and not like uh, test it on like uh, uh, one prepaid machine which simulates uh, multiple uh, multiple servers or multiple uh, machines? So it I have no problem simulating other machines because it, it's partly a virtualization product. So this is the easy part for me, but I want to run a lot of tests that use a lot of hardware at the same time. So I, I can upload an instance that has, I don't know, like 100 CPUs or something, but it's way easier for me to just run it as close to real life scenario and just make sure 
always feel comfortable that I can add as many tests that I, as I want without worrying about would they all fit in one instance. Just takes away the worries, I suppose. Yes. So I have a question. Um, how much of, when you're decentralizing tests, how much uh, of the facilities is PyTest giving you like, natively and how much do you have to add, like, like you showed us? Like, how much does PyTest give you anything at all? No, Python is just the uh, testing infrastructure. It just it does it just defines the flow. Um, my code is responsible for running for creating the uh, instances in the cloud and taking them off and so on. Okay, thank you so much.